Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. And Moses said to Hobat, the son of Ragul, the Mennonite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying into a place which the Lord has said, It will be Canaan. I will give it to you. Come with us. See, God's promised us a plan. Come with us. We will do do the good, and the Lord has spoken concerning for good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, "This is Hobat. I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my own kindred." And he, Moses, leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be. And the goodness of the Lord shall do unto us, the same will he do unto thee. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant went before them three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And when you read the rest of the story, Moses' father-in-law, Obed or Jethro, same man, He never goes. He does not obey Moses. And he goes back to his people. He goes back to his land and goes back to his gods. And I want to ask you a question. Have you ever witnessed somebody, especially in a relative, as Moses' father-in-law was, have you witnessed to him say, come with us, come, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, come to heaven. God has so many blessings, God has so much to offer. Come. And if they remain behind, they go back to whatever they believe. They don't go the way that God has prescribed for men to go. Can you imagine what Moses felt like? And remember, Moses, his wife, and his sons are also going to leave their dad and their grandpa. That's sad. John. John chapter 18. Verse 37. Pilate said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, for this cause came I into the world, that I might that I should bear witness unto the truth. Even one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate says unto him, What is true? And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said unto him, I find in him no fault at all. And you know the rest of the story. He still says, listen, uh, this man, he's not guilty, he's innocent. And Pilate turns Jesus over to be crucified. An innocent man is crucified. And there are various different stories. One of them was suicide. Of the life of Pilate. Like Jethro. Pilate did not do his right. And Pilate had the truth right there standing in front of him. He's speaking with God. Jesus is that prophet that be likened to Moses, the law said. When Jethro was speaking to Moses, he spoke to a prophet that is honored and loved by God. That years and years and years later, there would be the Messiah. He would be like Moses. And here Pilate standing before Jesus. 
And long four chapters ago, Jesus would say, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Moses said, I mean, excuse me, Pilate says, what is true? Then turns around and hands the truth, hands God over to be crucified. Where is he? Jethro said, no, I'm not going the way prescribed by God. The invitation by Moses. Pilate does not go the invitation by Jesus himself. Acts. The book of Acts. Chapter 26. And you have ever had somebody you're dealing with and you've gone maybe a long Bible debate and their final question is like into Pilate, well what is true? What is what is Jesus? You got your religion and I got my religion. You believe what you want to believe, I'll believe what I want to believe. So be it. Jethro was, no, I'm not going to go that way. Pilate, it's like, what's the truth? His attitude had to be is, works for you, Jesus. You're going to go to the cross. Pilate's life is going to go to a minute to who knows what happened? Nobody knows what happened. Joe Fethus doesn't even know. The great Jewish historian. And the question is where? Now Acts 26, 28, this is Agrippa. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. This is the, one of the most terrifying words. Of a human being. Well, Paul, I heard your reasoning. I listened to your testimony. Almost. Sorry, King Agrippa, we're not playing horseshoes here. We're not launching hand grenades. You can throw a hand grenade and almost hit the target, and still, it will do damage. You can throw horseshoes and almost make it and still make a point. But not with salvation. Now Jethro said, no, I'm not going. Pilate said, well, what is true? Agrippa says, almost. And you've been in any kind of public ministry. And you're dealing with somebody. And it's going well. Then the devil, or one of his devils, or something. I remember one time I was talking to somebody and we were carrying on a good conversation. We were at a flea market. And it almost persuaded me was... I forget it was a husband or a wife, but the, the spouse called the person I was talking to, say, Oh, look over here at this table. And the, the person, I forget, turned away from what we were talking about. Listening at hearing. Almost. I pray, hopefully, that seed was planted and that seed maybe has grown. Jethro was, I'm not going. Pilate, what is, what is true? Agrippa is like, almost. Can you imagine if if King Agrippa never got saved and he's in hell today, 
Well, I almost. Can you stand to see him at the great white throne judgment if he never got saved? Well, Jesus, I almost. Well, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. Almost is not. What do you say to almost? You didn't. You are going to have a fellowship at church. And somebody comes up to you and says, well, what can you bring? Well, I'll bring chocolate chip cookies. And the day the fellowship comes and you're like, okay, where's your cookies? Well, I almost made them. Where are they? I almost. That's sad. And if you've ever had been in a public ministry of witnessing evangelism, you've had somebody walk away and say, no, I'm not going that way. You've had somebody say, well, it's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for them. What is true? And you've dealt with somebody, and they may not have said, oh, Mo, but you, I mean, your heart is ticking, it's beating, it's, uh, yeah, all right, and then boom. You know what churches do for that almost today? They turn it into deception. They get somebody's almost, they're, they have not. They almost, and then they say, okay, say this prayer. And that person walks away almost not believing, okay, I, I said a prayer, and they die and go to hell. Almost is not salvation. You don't have them walk the altar. You don't have them say a prayer with almost. We are on dangerous grounds now. Because a Christian, a church will take that almost so they can make a tally mark on a piece of paper. Look, somebody said a prayer. I've been in churches like that. But almost is not salvation. Now, almost is maybe you can go to the right side and get saved. Or maybe you can fall to the wrong side and go to hell. But almost. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Four two. Paul's come to the end of his life. And he says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed from Thessalonica. Now, unlike Jethro, Moses' brother in law, we have a Christian here, and he is. That the marks of Demas have been well unto this point. Demas has been walking with Paul. Demas has been part of ministry. Then one day, for the world, unlike Moses, the word the Hebrew says, Moses suffered affliction rather than the pleasures of sin for a season. Demas goes for the pleasures of sin. And he walks, with, now he's not lost. He didn't lose his salvation. He did decide, you know what? It's no longer worth it. And that broke Paul's heart. You got somebody who's saved. He's walking unlike Jethro. He has accepted the truth like unlike Pilate. There was no almost like King Agrippa. Demas was a saved man. And in one day in his Christian walk, he said, I'm finished. I'm going to go back to the world. Now, he didn't lose nothing as far as salvation. He would have lost any rewards he had. Any gold, silver, precious stone. 
and he went to the wrong area. He went to Thessalonica. Thessalonica was on fire for the Lord. They were being persecuted for the word. They were out there witnessing for the word. They were out there on fire for Jesus. I always said Demas, he went to the wrong city to backslide. What? Have you ever had a Christian walk, Christian ministry, Christian evangelism, where somebody says, no, I'm not going? Maybe a family member. That hurt. You ever have somebody say, well, you know, it's good for you, it's good for them, good for them. You know, the Catholics have their belief, the Methodists have their belief, the Baptists have their belief. You've got many ba different types of Baptists. You may have somebody, well, I almost. How about you ever had a Demas? They're on fire for the Lord, and they're out there, they're doing something, and then one day you, you hear, Where's Demas? He gave up. I'm reminded many, many times in my Christian walk. I know Christians. They're no longer in the They're saved. But they're no longer in the service. They used to knock on doors. They used to pass out gospel tracts. They used to be on fire. They would read their Bible. They were, they were excited about the Word of God. They would say, look what I read in the Bible this week. Now they're back in the world. Where did Jethro go? Yeah, I know he went back. But the Bible doesn't tell us anything about Jethro anymore. Where did Pilate go? No one knows. No historian really knows what happened to Pilate. What happened to Pink, the, the King Agrippa? Where did he go? Did he get saved? Did he stay lost? The Bible don't tell us. Demas. Yeah, we know he went to Thessalonica. We know he went back in the world, but where? Where, what state was Demas when he finally died? I know he, he when he died he was absent to be he was absent from the body and present with the Lord, like any Christian. The Bible is the same thing. Exodus five. Exodus five. Verse one. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, say, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. This is what God has to say. Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh, here's Pharaoh, said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. You've been evangelizing, you ever been out in a public ministry, you ever been dealing with somebody? And you really can't say atheist because Pharaoh believed in the Egyptian gods. Pharaoh was a god king. I don't want to know about your god in the Bible. I don't care about Jesus. And I'm not going to listen to him. We won't hear no more about it. You take your religion, you take your Jesus and leave me alone. Have you had anybody deal with you like that? I've had my Catholic family. Now we know where Pharaoh ended up. He ended up dead in the Red Sea. And many Christians don't even believe that. But he did. He died in the Red Sea. He drowned. He drowned lost and went to hell. We know that. We know that when you come to the classification, when you deal with somebody who don't want to know anything about God, he drowns. And he was still Pharaoh when he drowned. He didn't lose his throne. He didn't lose his kingdom, though it was destroyed by plagues. 
He was still the Pharaoh. And whatever God did in his life, he didn't care. Well, that moment when God killed his firstborn son, we had a little lapse of, okay, then when we got thinking in our head, what did I do? Where did Jethro go? He didn't go with Moses. He didn't go with the, the children of God. <clears throat> Where did Pilate go? Pilate didn't want to hear the truth. He mocked the truth. And he believed that Jesus was the king. He wrote that inscription above the cross. He said, I have written what I've written. He believed. But he didn't want to face it. Again, where is Pilate today? Nobody knows. King Agrippa. Almost. And some foolish church or Christian was say, well, let's say this prayer. You almost became a surety of lost. I'd rather leave somebody almost and let the seed do his work. Because if God gives the increase, if God sends somebody to water that seed, that almost will become salvation. But where did King Agrippa end up? Demas, a saved man, a follower of Paul. There are great things written about him in the Bible. Then one day Paul wrote, he's backslidden. He went back to the world. He didn't lose his salvation. He lost his rewards. Where is he? Where is he? Pharaoh, I don't want your God. I am not going to obey your God. I am not going to obey your Bible. I've had I've had Baptist preachers. I don't care if you think Easter is pagan, Christmas is pagan. I'm going to do it. I ain't going to listen to you. Okay. A man that did not go the right way. A man that did not believe on the truth. A man that was almost persuaded. A man that was or became backslidden. And another man that said, no, I ain't obeying. And in your Christian walk, in your Christian life, whether it be a family, a friend, a co-worker, maybe somebody you just have a cup of coffee with, and it leaves you in your Christian walk. And there are some Christians that, where are they? I know one Christian family. They loved the Lord, but they valued a family outing more than they did service to God. And they're broken out in the world. Where are they? What are they doing? They got other interests. It's like all these people here. And the question is, they would not. And we know not where they be 